Hey, several people have asked me to do an update video on my new big pulse motor and uh, a lot has happened. I've been on holiday for a while, uh, but uh, still I managed to uh, progress quite nicely. So uh, let's get into it. And this is my setup now. As you can see, quite a lot of uh, progress has been made. Uh, the rotor has been assembled, epoxied everything together. I made some temporary test stands out of wood. Uh, in the end, it's, uh, it's supposed to have a nice case with 12 coils. Right now, I just have these two coils down there. And um, in case you haven't watched the previous video, it's a north-south setup with a strip of metal in the back or a soft iron, actually. And also these uh, coils are connected like that. So you're going to have a closed magnetic loop uh, going on. That's uh, the idea of this uh, this motor. And um, I have two very small, but they're still 48 volt battery banks. Um, and it took me literally forever to figure out the battery swapping uh, circuit. Uh, Paul Babcock somehow didn't want to share any of that uh, publicly during his presentation. He said, you have to figure it out yourself. Well, that's what I did. Um, what I, I, I had several ideas for the battery swapping, but I settled on this idea from Rick Friedrich. And it's, uh, it's a really good system. It uses this uh, four pole double throw um, latching relay. Um, and the good thing about it is that um, this one relay can uh, do all the switching. So you don't, a lot of the setups use two relays. Uh, also the fact that it latches is great because uh, with a regular relay, uh, half the time you'll have the power on, so current will flow through, and then when the current's off, it switches to the other side. That means that you're using power half of the time, which is a shame because with this latching one, you just give it a little pulse and it switches. You give it another pulse and it switches the other way. So that is, uh, that's great. Um, yeah, so I got this idea from Rick Friedrich here. Uh, however, I did build my own little driver circuit there. It's very simple. It's two diodes, three resistors and three uh, tiny transistors. And uh, I'm using two uh, Arduino pins as well. Here is the schematic. Um, so what it does is uh, with this pin, it uh, sets uh, the relay one way. And with this uh, pin here, it sets the relay the other way. Uh, but it also simultaneously um, pulls the enable pin on the MOSFET gate driver to ground, which turns it off. So the good thing about that is that a lot of people using relays in these battery swappers um, tell me that their uh, relays burn out. Uh, so what this does is it actually turns the motor off while the relay switches by uh, using this enable pin on the gate driver. Uh, and uh, so no current actually flows through the relay while it uh, switches and so no sparks no arcs and so the lifetime of the relay is greatly extended which is great because this thing is 40 bucks um, so I got this little well little it's quite large actually this um, yeah connector for it so I can click it in there like that and uh, so that's perfect because then you have all these screw terminals with it's still a mess of wires but at least it makes it a little uh, little clearer. Uh, I will share the schematics and also the wiring uh, diagram and everything uh, in the description of this video. Um, also the schematic of uh, yeah of this little driver board and everything. And uh, another thing I worked on for a very long time is the actual driver board. Um, it uses a uh, gallium nitride FET and uh, very fast rise times it achieves. It achieves like rise times of uh, less than 10 nanoseconds uh, in, so if everything's set up correctly. So that's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, it took me months and months to, uh, to design this and uh, I had a big issue with the gate driver uh, blowing up all the time. It turned out that the because this gate driver is dual channel, so it has uh, you can use it to drive two MOSFETs at the same time or you can combine those two channels to drive a single MOSFET even harder so you can switch it even faster. That's what I did. But in that case you have to keep your your signal 
uh, wire very short because it needs also a fast rise time else one channel might open before the other one and um, then yeah you can get an exploding um, gate driver um, because longer wire means slower rise times and um, then that happens that situation also I had to um, change something on the PCB uh, because I used only a single gate resistor and I had to use two uh, one for each channel so uh, that was my mistake this is the very latest version I sent one of these to uh, to uh, a client actually someone bought it uh, it's available on my website I'll post a link here also in the description uh, it's available for purchase I have enough parts for uh, one or two more and I can always order uh, more parts but it works really well uh, so uh, I think I talked enough now it's it's, uh, it's time to show how it all works everything is hooked up now uh, every 10 seconds I set it now to, to switch to relay, so let's have a look. See, there it went. Um, I'm measuring the voltage of this battery bank, just so you can see when it is drawing power and when it is getting power back from the flyback. Um, also, just briefly, this is the schematic of the gate, or of the, yeah, the motor driver, but I will... Uh, Put a high resolution version in the description as well so you guys can check it out so uh, let's give this puppy a spin This battery is now the run battery as this is going down. Now it's the charge battery, now it's going up, the voltage. And now it's the run battery again. Well that works really well, the battery swapping. The motor is running smoothly. running on full ceramic bearings, they're $50 each. The motor currently doesn't have a lot of torque, so it takes it a while to uh, get up to speed. Top speed measured has been around 700 RPM right now. But this is the setup, and it works. Now, as you can see, I also created these little voltage dividers, two of them. Um, one will go on each battery so that the Arduino can keep track of the voltage of each battery. Um, also, it keeps track which battery is active and it will also register the RPM. And this is a special um, Arduino I got off of AliExpress, which also has a Wi-Fi chip on it, so it will then Using Wi-Fi, we'll post it to a little web dashboard that I'll create. At least that's the plan, so that I can keep track of uh, the batteries and uh, the whole system, even when I'm not right here. So that would be quite cool. I'll keep you updated on that too. I'll also share the Arduino code. Um, uh, I'll create a, there's a public repository. I'll, I'll put the link in uh, the description as well. So uh, yeah, then there's one final thing I really want to share, and that is... Uh, uh, a friend of mine has been in contact with someone called Julian Perry and uh, he uh, was building a pulse motor as well but then he decided you know what I'll take the rotor away and I'll first uh, going to experiment with you know what is the ideal frequency to pulse these coils at so that the battery uh, charges up the fastest. Now he wrote an 80 page manual um, with incredible results in there. He got up to uh, coefficient of performance of 38 and that is extremely impressive obviously but it also highlights something that we as pulse motor builders might be overlooking and that is each battery each type of battery and each size of battery has a preferred frequency pulse frequency uh, and also a pulse voltage uh, and unless we tune that unless we first determine what the ideal pulse frequency and pulse voltage is to charge these batteries with, uh, we would only see any 
good performance, like a high CLP, if we're lucky. So ideally, we would work backwards. We wouldn't start with building a motor and then hoping it works. No, we would first determine what is the ideal frequency and voltage to charge these batteries with. And then we design a motor that runs at that frequency, at that RPM, so that we get the best charging um, situation. I think this explains a lot of the reasons why some people see results, but then it can't be replicated. And that's just because their motor happens to run at the correct RPM for the batteries that they're using. So it's uh, it's the other way around, guys. We, I uh, urge you to read that document in detail. It's in the description. And um, yeah, please let me know how you go. Uh, I will keep you guys updated once in a while on this project if there's any uh, big changes. And uh, I'll try to share everything like publicly, like the schematics and everything. Um, yeah, if you want a fully working uh, gate driver uh, board uh, or um, a motor driver board, uh, then uh, yeah, check out my website and the, in the link in the description and uh, you can order uh, one yourself if you want. Okay, guys, have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.